Right now, smoke fills the sky as Israeli forces rock Gaza City and prepare for a massive ground assault. The administration is scrambling as reports indicate that Americans are among those held captive in Gaza. To those holding American hostages in Gaza, you say what? I say we're going to do everything in our power to find them, everything in our power. And uh, I'm not going to go into the detail of that, but there's, uh, we're working like hell on it. But our next guest knows all about rescuing Americans in terror hotbeds and says not enough is being done. Retired Army Ranger and Save Our Allies, Allies co-founder Tim Kennedy joins us. Tim, thanks for being here. What do you make of the so far American administration response to Americans being held? And it's, um, yeah, as, as you know, it's one of the toughest jobs in the world, hostage rescue, hostage negotiation. Um, what, in the past few years, we've made some very, very strategic mistakes about attaching a price tag to Americans. Mm -hmm. um, beforehand, there was a consequence if you touched Americans. We would, you know, we would go through hell to find them. We'll go into the desert. We'll find, you know, if, if, you, if you look at um, some recent examples, Navy SEALs haloing into the deserts of Africa in Somalia to rescue one American and kill everyone that's on the ground. Literally every single person that had anything to do with it died in the desert. That's very, very different than releasing $6 billion of restricted funds. Um, and this type of hostage rescue could not be more complex. And it's the largest hostage rescue in, in, in America since, I think, Tehran, since the embassy. So how much of this, it's, I'm, I'm so fascinated by all of this, is it that we're going to go in and rescue or is there negotiations going on? What, are your, what, what do you think are the, the plans being made right now and how much of it um, is even possible as they're starting to bomb uh, Gaza right now? Yeah, so, you know, war, war crimes play a big part into this. And currently, Hamas, whether you call them an official government or not, clearly they're, they're a terrorist organization. You know, they burnt babies alive. They killed babies. They intentionally targeted Holocaust survivors and kidnapped Americans, knowingly that these were Americans. So the atrocities that we know that they have committed in the past week, um, what would they use hostages for to protect themselves, protect their positions, and then use them for leverage in other negotiations? Um, these are truly evil people, and they, I, I, I can't grasp the type of things that they would do to these people in an effort to try to win other leverage opportunities within negotiations. The thought of going into Gaza um, is incomprehensible. You know, it's, it's incomprehensible what they're doing, but on the, on the operator special operations hostage rescue side, the thought of going into Gaza block by block trying to find these people where there could be a booby trap in every corner, these people are buried inside of tunnels. You know, they could use chemical weapons. Nothing is beyond what Hamas would do. Like, these are truly terrible, evil humans, and they would use hostages, even these young children that they have as hostages, as leverage for other things. It's, it's just truly horrible. Tim, I know, um, I know a little bit about this. I know that uh, the United States government has begun to, to charter flights for Americans to leave Israel. Um, there's a couple of different locations. I think they're willing to drop Americans off, not all the way to America, from my understanding. You have to then coordinate your secondary flight uh, on your own. But I know that a lot of guys like yourself, like Save Our Allies and others are already stepping up, as you have on several occasions, whether or not it's in Ukraine or Afghanistan, to fill the gaps. Yeah, this is tough, man. Um, you know, we, we were arguing about the severity of the situation. And uh, when you have Mexico and Canada that are beating you in the evacuation of Americans, <laughs> you're, you're doing things wrong, right? Me Mexico and Canada flew planes in there and evacuated all their people, and they were very effective in communicating this. You know, we, we, we have had a lot of success getting a lot of people out. We've privately chartered tiny little planes to fly to Cyprus. We have um, coordinated movements of large people into large planes and whatever remain commercial flights. Um, you know, as we're talking right now, I, I was on my phone struggling with the decision of do we send people to an airport for a potential Department of State flight, even though communication channels have broken down and we don't know if it's happening. Like mm -hmm. in real time, these are struggles. I literally set my phone down wow. seconds ago as we're trying to make this decision of like, man, do we send these 50 people to the to the slots that we thought that we had? We just haven't had communicated. It's um, 
as difficult as it has been, you know, I, I want to first thank, you know, the, the people on Save Our Allies team, Will and Daniel and all the other people, the volunteers that are working. I mean, I don't think we've slept in six days. Um, forgive my stumbling, but like in the past week, there hasn't been a night of sleep. And uh, we're trying to get these Americans out and it's not our job. Yeah. But the Department of State people are doing the work and they're trying. It's just such a mess. This, this is a horrible situation. We've got to get our Americans off the battlefield. One thing's become clear over the last several years is the vital role guys like you play. And by the way, you can help it. Go to saveourallies.org. Uh, Tim, appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tim. Thanks, yeah, Tim. Thank you.